Hi, my name is Zora Carroll. I am a senior in the class of 20. And I'll be receiving my certificate in diversity, inclusion, and social change. Um, I'm a senior and I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I began West Town School in, 2020, in 2016 as a freshman. So um, I've had a lifetime commitment towards helping others and being an advocate for others. I think it's important to recognize that choice is a privilege and when it comes to action, and I didn't always have such a privilege, and it, I really wanted to be able to utilize all the spaces that I could um, some people don't feel comfortable representing themselves, don't, um, whether that's because they don't have the knowledge to do so or the vocabulary to support themselves. Uh, and I think that it's really important to, if you do have this um, vocabulary in the education to speak out and, and you know what's going on and people who don't have the vocabulary to describe what's happening to them need that help that you are able to step in and are willing to do so. Um, I really utilized this in spaces such as discipline council. Um, I had the role of chief prefect in my junior year. I really valued this. And in senior year, I was invited back as a senior representative. So I was on discipline council for two years. Um, and using this space as a place for, re for restorative justice and for really um, getting kids to understand that they have the resources, that they don't have to turn to, uh, that they don't have to turn to um, cheating or plagiarism or uh, other possible mistakes that can be made simply because they don't know what access they have. And so creating or trying to bridge the gap of inequity between our students at West Town School and our community through um, providing and and sh and uh, providing instruction on where kids can find access um, to the resources they have available to them at West Town School was a really big part of um, my role in this one council and trying to enforce that that was a space for restorative justice to the, to the entire council so that message continued. Extracurricular activities was a major part of why I came to West Town. Um, I really let myself into these spaces. I really think that, that the extracurriculars at are the clubs at West Town School are amazing spaces for dialogue and change and social change. Um, I'm head of Black Student Union and I've been head of that since my junior year um, until now. And I'm head of Students of Color Association or SOCA. Um, and I've been head of, I've had a leadership role in that club since my freshman year in 2016. I think that Black Student Union is this amazing space to understand internal diversity, um, having this intercommunity dialogue where you can really address so many problems within both the Black community and the West Town and Black people at West Town. Um, and what it means to occupy those spaces and the experiences that we have and, and giving words to students that otherwise uh, may have not had many conversations about race at home and, and um, helping them understand what it means to occupy a predominantly white in or space at predominantly white institutions. And Students of Color Association, because it's everyone is invited, no matter um, of their ethnicity um, or origin, uh, we have this beautiful inner community dialogue where you can really get to so many different topics and really have a broader range of education for students um, where we can really discover more about ourselves as a community as well as a global community and, and what it means to be um, a minority in this world um, and, and giving people vocabulary and, and having people know what it, how important it is to be able to advocate for themselves, to be able to address what's happening to themselves and educate others on that. So for my coursework, I took um, Black Identity Society in my junior year, and that was a class I took, teacher, an English class with teacher Marissa, teacher Marissa Colston and teacher Stephanie Tucker, and I, I really love this class. Um, we talked so about so much of what Black people's contributions to society have been, what it is to have a Black identity in a, in a dominant culture of white people, um, internal diversity, discussing really just all the intersections of internal diversity within the Black community, as well as our greater contributions to global society. Um, I really valued lessons that I received there, especially about um, Black feminism and, and collectives and, and the impact that that's had on the world. Um, contemporary Affairs was also an amazing class that I took in my senior year. It was a history elective that I took with teacher Whitney Sattel. It's exactly as it says. It talks about modern eras today. An image here is a photo from the Hong Kong protest, which I actually wrote an essay about later, which is linked in my portfolio. Um, I really think that this class helped me form so many uh, connections between the policies that are in place today to exactly how they came into place and, and why and what did, has that impacted um, beyond just that policy? And so this class has been really impactful. I plan on studying 
Um, I'll be going to Barnard College of Columbia University in the fall, and I plan on studying international affairs there. So I think this class will give me a, has given me a wonderful basis to learn about other nations and learn about the history, or continue learning about the history of other countries, especially places that I hadn't been um, so well educated on the history of. I brought this into my class, Semipolitan and uh, Modern Europe, um, which I took in my senior year. Um, I wrote an essay about Semipalatinsk, which uh, was an area in Kazakhstan. You can read these bullet points here to understand a little bit more about what this essay exactly speaks on, sort of the human rights violations that were incurred there at the hands of um, the USSR in the 1950s, all the way up until 1992. Um, and so these kind of issues of global social change are really important to me. I think that a lot of the time we get stuck in this um, super Western focused idea of what it, what social change can look like. And we only want to talk about in, in these terms, I focus a lot in most of my global papers about restorative justice processes and how that, what that would look like um, in a global context or in nations that aren't America, non-Western nations where we, we generally um, forget to expand our mind to think about. In these contexts, we think about um, what it would look like for um, restorative change, especially in Kazakhstan would be um, perhaps money being given for healthcare aid, as well as um, education, other aspects of, that have been impacted by um, these bombings that they for, that they perpetuated onto the Kazakh people in this region. For the Uyghur um, photo essay, continuing these ideas of global change and, and global social change and diversity and exactly what that means. Um, Uyghur Muslim people in Xinjiang, China, um, are an ethnic group of Muslims that have lived there for a very long time. Currently, there are concentration camps, and the government has really been pushing um, this Islamophobia. And so in this context, having actual greater impact, having a, a greater uh, global system that can impact um, China to actually have incentives to make change here that actually push for um, a greater diversity within that government, not allowing for things such as, as Islamophobia be so normalized, so okay, even um, um, expected, if you're going to be a part of that nation state um, is super important, uh, obviously for these people here who have been there for such a long time. Uh, so to me, doing research on these, and you can totally click these links and see exactly what this looks like um, and what exactly is happening there. I think that uh, they, there's this aspect of a possibility of political imprisonment for these people um, is a major issue, especially when we think about social change and being able to speak out about what's happening to an individual. Um, so my extended project, I decided to do a, a I decided to talk about the value of black economics and black owned businesses. And I started this project in my freshman year in peace and justice. And I went all the way into macroeconomics um, in my junior year, uh, in the spring of my junior year. I think data driven social change has an immense possibilities. I think that data in combination with context is the only way that you can truly understand what you're, the information that you're being given and the only way you can truly analyze um, numbers. And in this context, using data to really understand exactly how black, black people are impacted by economics and capitalism in America and, um, was something that was really close to me. I think that I did, in my freshman year, I was so interested in um, finding out exactly how many black owned businesses are there. Why are there so few black owned businesses? How does this impact the black community and kind of formed like creating a basis for this, for, for understanding of this topic really beginning to uh, look into why do we have such little diversity within our markets? What, um, how, so what industries and specifics are pushing out black people? And I found that, you know, the black people have a buying power of $3 trillion in America. And so why is that not being reflected in our industries and in our marketplaces and in our actual business owners? Um, in macroeconomics, I got more into the statistics of this and kind of what is the economic impact of this and how do we create more economic incentives for black owned businesses? Um, and I began this kind of idea with the database for local black owned businesses my freshman year as part of my social action research project. But in my junior year, I was really able to talk about um, how we can further change and, and what exactly that would look like specific to black people in America and, and banks and, loan, and loans and um, loan diversity. Uh, so for my critical analysis, I wrote about Toni Morrison's Beloved. 
Um, I wrote this for my senior essay in, in the class of the essay. Um, I, and you can totally read quite a bit about it. I'll read an intro part of my of my paper. I wrote about the impact of motherline on masculinity, community, and healing. So beloved is to start, beloved, a deep, powerful neo-slave narrative is an examination of the soul as it exists in containment. The novel excavates the wounds left in the African American experience from slavery in the immediate postbellum era. Um, I talk about how the limitations of, of transformation occurred due to slavery and how severance from motherline or cultural bearing of African traditions shifted the black community's ability to therapize and heal. Um, and how relationships between generations of mothers are used in isolation of characters, but not their memories, are used to understand um, the limitations in being able to transform and, and grow from trauma um, within the Black community. Within off-campus immersion, um, I talk a lot of off-campus immersion. I've had a lot of wonderful experiences thanks to Westtown. Um, I attended the SDLC conference and I had amazing experiences there, um, talking and are meeting with and, and hearing Kimberly William Crenshaw and Tanisi Coates, Kimberly, Kim, um, Ms. Crenshaw, Dr. Crenshaw, I think, um, uh, is the mother of the term intersectionality. That was an amazing experience. Beyond Civil Rights was one of the trips that we had planned to go through the South and meet people all around that. That would have been an amazing experience, really enriching my understanding of diversity in this country and inclusion and what it means to have continued change. Um, and for my non for non school sponsored project, for my service project, I um, attended an international social work trip and I went to Fragile Women's Center in Arusha, Tanzania. Um, I met the founder, which is on the bottom right there. Um, and she really talks about cultural misogyny and cultural violence against women. We can see that this place is a women's vocational training center and they train women and um, who were either child brides or runaways or um, became pregnant. Their families refused to or could not support them on um, being able to be mothers, but also work and support their families and being able to have both. Many, some of these people are victims and survivors of FGM, female genital mutilation, another aspect of cultural violence in this particular region of the world, um, where the belief is that women do not uh, have rights to their female pleasure centers and that women's um, reproduction systems are simply only for reproduction. Um, and they are surgically remove the female pleasure centers um, of the body and learning more about exactly how is this cultural violence being perpetuated was really um, enlightening and learning without judgment was really a big lesson of that trip. And we also visited a number of other places that really informed me on that. Um, so you can read more about that in my service reflection. In, um, so here's my portfolio, my ending piece. Um, on the right, on the left side, you have all of the th links that are in this presentation. On the right side are some additional aspects. I have fetishization of an opinion of a black men at West End School, an opinion board post I wrote in my freshman year. Um, I also linked a project from my Black, Soci Black Identity Society class about feminiz Black feminism and womanism. It features Black collectives, and I wrote, uh, created this project with some seniors who graduated last year. I'm really proud of this piece, and I think this really well encompasses um, some, a lot of the education I received um, in Black Identity and Society, and I think that was super enriching class, and I really appreciated that. In my junior year, I was nominated for a certificate, or I was nominated for the Princeton Prize of Race Relations, and I received the highest regional honor, um, the Certificate of Acknowledgement from the Princeton Prize of Race Relations, and from Mercer Colston, I really have so much thanks for that woman. Um, and my college application is kind of much more personal look about the impact of social change on me, the impact of social activism and student activism that it had on me and sort of more of my background in this and my middle school experience. So kind of you want to see a little bit more of what that looked like. And the Hong Kong protest essays is actually an essay that I'd written about uh, in my contemporary affairs class. I showed a picture um, on that slide of what the, some of those protests looked like, but I wrote a full essay on it, a full reported piece about um, what exactly was going on there. Um, I really, really appreciate Marissa Colson. She's done so much for me. I'd like to finish by saying activism isn't a personality trait or a type of person. It is a choice that you make every day. And it is a privilege to choose and even more so to do nothing. And honestly, in an age of information, ignorance is truly a choice. So you have to decide.